Thank you. Thank Philip Marlowe is obviously kind of one of the great kind of big screen characters. Yeah. Um, I wondered, Liam, when you're playing someone like this, do you kind of feel the, the kind of shadow of the other actors to have played him? No, I, I, I don't say that, blown smoke up my ass, forgive the expression. No, I did. I, I feel like I grew up with Bogart and certainly Robert Mitchum, and who famously played him in 1978, twice, I think. Uh, the big sleep, the long goodbye, and, uh, but, but he always seemed to be, um, the character always seemed to be on our little black and white TV set growing up in the north of Ireland, you know, and Sunday afternoons, you know, rain, trilby hats, bit of gunfire, very sexy blondes, you know, like Veronica Lake and stuff. So I, I kind of feel I know that character, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, Neil, when you're kind of writing the script with William Monaghan, obviously the kind of Raymond Chandler wit is kind of such a kind of trademark thing. How do you kind of go about trying to replicate that, I suppose? Well, I didn't try to replicate it. I, re I read William's script, you know, and I was kind of amazed, actually, at this huge reams of dialogue. Uh, you, the first time I read it, I was like, whoa! They speak all the time. They speak so much, and so much of the speech was, was kind of so apt to the period and so kind of witty. But the one thing it didn't have was a voiceover, you know. And that, that's all, what you always think of, of uh, from Raymond Chandler, don't you? You think, yeah, she looked as enticing as a tarantula on an angel cake or whatever, you know, this kind of thing. And um, but I just thought it was first of all a challenge, yeah, because the scenes were big. You know, and there were, and I hadn't written them, which is always a challenge. You know what I mean? No, I mean it is as as because as as a director, I am I'm I'm a writer. You know, and if I write something, I can see what to do with it. You know what I mean? And it's I've, I think I've rarely taken on something that that has been so written, if I could put it that way. Do you understand what yeah, I mean? You know? Yeah. And I I I had to have res enormous respect for what William had done. I added elements more towards the end of of the story than at the beginning. You know, okay. but. Um, you know, I really I remember seeing these uh, these movies not on a TV because we didn't have a TV, but in a scout hall. You know, when I was in Clontarf in Dublin, you know, and you'd be watching it, the screen would always be a sheet, you know, and there'd be a projector behind, and generally a priest or some social <laughs> person, and it'd be all this black and white stuff, and then there'd be flashes of gunfire, and you wouldn't have a clue what was going on, yeah. but for some reason it was wonderful. But it's. Uh, you know, it was great. It was great. The only thing I didn't want to do was approximate to black and white photography. You yeah. know, I mistrust the word noir. Is that a terrible thing to say? Yeah. Well, it really, I think it's yeah. the word is is too much of a metaphor. I think in a strange way. You know, so when I did this, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to shoot it in full color. You know what I mean? Yeah. As if Howard Hawks had, you know the best of digital cameras available to yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, I wanted to drench it in sunlight and in, because Los Angeles is, I never think of it as anything but bright, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, that, that was the, the approach I took. I wanted to explore the character with Liam, see what he would do with it, you know, and make a movie with him again, and, and it was a rather wonderful journey. And, and there are some great kind of sporting actors in the cast as well. Oh, yeah. Liam, is there anyone you particularly enjoyed kind of verbally sparring with, I suppose, um, uh, sharing scenes with? Colin Meaney, I've known Colin since late 70s. You know, we were in the theatre together in Dublin, you know. Alan Cumming, uh, I've always admired Alan Cumming. Yeah. He, uh, he did this extraordinary production of, with Sam Mendes yeah. of Cabaret with my, my late wife, Natasha oh, Richardson. Of course, yeah. And they were epic. Alan was epic in that production. I've, I've just always admired him. So it was great when Neil told me he was, we've got Alan Cumming to play the part. And Jessica Lange. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah, I've done this is the second film with Jessica. Two also with Diane Kruger. Um, very easy on the eye, the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and terrific, terrific actresses. You know? yeah. Now the sporting, and Danny Houston too, mm -hmm. my god. That kind of really set the film for me, mm. having mm. Danny Houston as one of the baddies, you know? Yeah, yeah. When it came to, um, um, I guess, um, recreating 30s LA in mm. Barcelona, mm. How, what are the kind of challenges in terms of working with the production? To well, can you like imagine that? recreating 30s LA in LA, can you? Well, well, I mean, I was going, okay, 
Uh, I mean, if you look at LA Confidential, they shot that in uh, Sacramento, I think, you know. Yes. And um, there is nothing. I, I mean, I happen to love Los Angeles, you know, but the thing I love most about it is that they tear it down every year and rebuild it. You know? yeah. Every time I go to Melrose, it's a different street. You know, it's yeah. extraordinary. <laughs> you go, wow. That's why they have this amazing, that's why Frank Gehry came out of this amazing architecture, utter lack of respect for the past, you know what I mean? And which is its own aesthetic and its own thing, you know, but it means that you don't find, the only piece left of, 1938 Los Angeles is Hancock Park, I think, you know? Mm. You, know you know Hancock Park? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where yeah. that agent used to have these ridiculous parties. <laughs> what was the name? Ed, oh, anyway. Lamato. Ed Lamato. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Can we, I, I don't <laughs> want to digress into that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, um, you know, so, you know, I was, I was sent this wonderful script, this wonderful opportunity to make this movie with Liam again, mm. you know, after having made three others. And... Uh, uh, we didn't know how to realize it, and I said, well, why don't we try Barcelona, you know, and look at it. And, you know, the architecture is, you know, Los Angeles arch architecture of that period, they call it Spanish Mediterranean, you know. It's based on kind of Mexican, Spanish stuff, and Barcelona was full of that. It was also a city of hills, there was a sea to one side. So I thought maybe with a bit of work we could make this work, you know, make this our alternative version of L.A. Yeah, yeah. I used to live in Laurel Canyon oh, in uh, yeah. Los Angeles in the eight, late 80s. And Marlo, the character, is, lives there, you know? And when we were shooting uh, this particular street for my character lives, it was, it was uncannily, like, mm. like Laurel Canyon, and those surrounding hills, you know? And Liam, I understand this is your 100th film, is that sure. right? Yeah. Uh, is, does yeah. that kind of... Feel like a landmark? Do you kind of look at, ch ch take that landmark as a chance to kind of reflect on your career, look back on your career? Or? Sad, I'm turning 70 last year, you know, before I sleep, I certainly have. I <laughs> think, where has time gone, you know? Yeah. And how lucky I've been to be in this industry mm -hmm. uh, and making these films, given a chance to work with Neil four times. We're planning to work again towards the end of this year, hopefully, on mm. number five. And, it's been a terrific journey. I love it. I've been so blessed and really so lucky, you know. Mm. 